Welcome to The Rock. We hope what you watch today inspires you. And we'd love to hear your questions and comments via Twitter at The Rock of York. You can also find us on Facebook or contact us through the website at www.rockofyork.co.uk. In the meantime, let's crack on. Yeah, why not? Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Say after me, Guten Abend. Guten Abend. Louder, Guten Abend. Guten Abend. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Good stuff. I mean, what Anthony did not uh, say, that not only this church really has helped, uh, what has been built in Austria also financially, but also with more than that, there are two things which have really, really helped us. One of them as a family also, because we see Anthony and Christine, also the whole family as friends of ours. And you know, when uh, we, we left England, well, we were sent from England as missionaries to Austria over 30 years ago. That's a long time ago, yeah? I know I don't look that old, but uh, uh, it was over 30 years ago. And what happens, hi, what happens is, uh, uh, you know, there are many people who say, we'll pray for you and give you support, financial support, so that you can be missionaries there. But, uh, uh, but there are actually some people, like, like this church, like Anthony and Christine, who have been people who have actually, when we were in need as a, as a family, and you know, sometimes uh, you can be in need. Yeah, come on. You know that? <laughs> or we can say in trouble, you know, like. Yeah. And, uh, and so there have been people who really basically got on the plane and came to us and stayed with us and talked to us. And, and, uh, and so that we, that they, that's very rare. You know, there's not many people who do that. So we are very, very thankful for that. Very, very thankful. This has been an incredible help, and it still is for us as a family to know that there are people not only who say, okay, we'll give you some money, but go on with the job and see you next time, or send a couple of newsletters uh, now and then. But there actually are people who are interested in us and how we are doing, and this has been a great, great help. You know, this is the reason also why Angela and I, we never experienced Austria as the graveyard of the missionaries. As we were preparing to go to Austria as missionaries, I remember we were, we were in, a, in, a, in a missions conference, and we were standing there in front of some big poster about Austria and stuff. And there was an older lady who came to us and he said, I will pray for you. And I said, oh, thank you very much. And she said, because I heard that Austria is the graveyard of the missionaries. I said, thank you very much. <laughs> I didn't know where to cry or laugh, you know, like. But anyhow, the reason why it's not become our graveyard is not because we are superhumans or super whatever, but it's because really people have really helped us. God sent people in our way, on our way, in our way, in our way sometimes also, uh, to, to help us and to uh, pray for us, to advise us and to be friends with us and now and then to smoke a good cigar. Should I say that? Should I, say? I should say that? Should I say? Oh, it's too late now, I said it. <laughs> Oh, it's really, really cool. And something else also that we really appreciate. And the reason why I say that, because sometimes, you know, I see that in Austria, that very often the people who are at home in the church, who are actually building a church that represents something that allows God to do something with them that becomes an encouragement to other people, they, don't, they are not aware of what God is doing with them, you know? So that's why I like when people come to us and tell us what is happening because of what We've been, the seed that we've been sowing. But I want to tell you that it's been very, very important to us. Uh, even the message that's going, that, that has gone out and is going out of this house. Let me tell you, you are a very privileged people. You are very privileged people. You know, uh, you know, you know. In Austria, I, mean, I don't know if you've done it in England, but in the German-speaking world, we had 500 years anniversary of the. Reformation. Reformation, 500 years ago, this guy called Martin Luther dare say stuff that nobody was saying in the church, and he brought the Reformation, and then after everything that, that was, has happened, I mean, he was not a perfect man, you know, I mean, he had his own failures and stuff, but nobody's perfect, you know, and God used him to bring a Reformation to the church, and for 500 years, we all been benefiting from this stuff. You know, and it's easy to say, oh, how great is that? But not many people want to pay the price yeah. to go through Reformation. No many, you know, and, and he was not popular. Many people wanted to kill him. He had, he had death threats every day on his doorstep. 
So it was not like romantic like we think now, you know, like, oh, nice, the Reformation, let's have a party. And, and in Austin, you know, at the Lutheran Church, we, we had many events, great events, or very peaceful events. Nobody was risking anything. There was no death threats on us. We are just having a blast about what a man did 500 years ago. But let me tell you, 500 years ago is a long time. And the problem there is, is that very often um, we celebrate the change that 500 years ago happened in the church, but we are not courageous enough to keep on with the change, you know? And so actually, I was uh, speaking in Switzerland, and uh, they wanted me to speak in the theme of the Reformation. And actually, at the end of my speech, after an hour, I spoke about the church of today, you know, the church that includes, the church that doesn't, is not afraid of the world. Actually, the, the church that becomes worldly, you know, like, you know, like in, a, in that sense, you know, and stuff like that. After I finished, there was a lady at the very back, put her hands up because I asked if anybody had any question. And she put her hand up and said, I have a question. I said, yes. She said, but were you not talking about the Reformation today? Why didn't you mention the Reformation? And I said to her, I spoke for one hour about the Reformation, not the one that has happened, but what needs to happen. Yeah. <laughs> what needs to happen? And you know, the best way to remember Martin Luther is not to look back. The best way to, look, uh, to, to celebrate Martin Luther is to look forward. And the reason why I want to tell you, you know, be appreciative of what is happening in this house, because uh, I believe that you as a house, you are being a voice of reformation. And you know what? Some of us have woken up, and there is so much to catch up, that you have to do so much, so much change at once. And I know maybe some of you say, oh, we just got hold of one new understanding, and Anthony comes already with the next one. And, you know, give us chance. You know, sometimes I feel like that, you know, like. And, uh, but you know what? There is so much to catch up. You know, some years ago, when, before I converted, before I was converted to Mac, I had a PC. <laughs> I had a PC. And every time I was working on the PC, we were very regularly. I was working on something, and I, hadn't, I, had a mem- I started preaching already. This is preaching, okay? <laughs> In case somebody said, when is he starting preaching? This is the preaching. Um, <clears throat> uh, and I was working on the computer, and, and the now and then it came this message, you know, uh, there is a new update on Windows, or whatever program I was using, and you have three choices. You know, you can say download now, later, or no. Remind me, something like that. No, no, remind me, or it was later. In Germany it says later, you know, download now, later, or no. And you know what I took mostly? No, I took later. I took later because I obviously I was I wasn't dumb enough. I, I, I knew I need to download this thing. Otherwise, I have very old old software. And I kept on saying later, 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 later. So one day I bought this big Bible software from the U.S. It was a great Bible software with lots of dictionaries and stuff. He was really invested a lot of money in it. It was in the days where you you got you know discs you know, CD things, you know, you didn't download it, you just got it sent. So I, received, I got the parcel with this box full of CDs, the Bible program. So I, I went to my computer and started down, you know, load this software in the computer. And then when it was finished, it wouldn't work. So I thought, oh my goodness, so I tried all I could, hours and hours. You know, when you get this thing and you're really ready for it, you just get stuck in it. And you, and if you're a pastor, you, you can do that. You have the time to do that. And, and <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was there for hours. And, and then I waited until nighttime came when it was daytime in the U.S. So I rang in the U.S. and I told the guy, it's done work. And the guy said, okay, try this and try that and try this and nothing worked. And then... At the end, he said, but what, we, what, what, what windows do you have? You know, what software do you have? And I told him the one I have. He said, oh, God. He said, that's an old one. Did, you didn't do the upgrades. I said, no, I didn't do the upgrades. So I keep on things later, later. And I missed a couple of upgrades. So the guy said, do the upgrade and then try again. So I did the upgrade, and it worked. <laughs> now, I think many of us, for 500 years, haven't done any upgrades. No upgrades. No wonder God speaks and he goes, and he goes, you know, or what? Do you say tilt here? Tilt? 
You know, when, when, when um, I was a little boy, I used, to, I used to play this game with this flipper, you call it. What do you call it? You know, these, these little things, like you press the button. Pinball. What do you, ah, pinball. pinball, pinball. And we used to move it so much, and there was a big letter that came tilt, and the thing switched off. You know, that was like dead. You know, it just, you, you, you wobbled it home too much, and it just stopped, you know. And anyhow, sometimes when God speaks, our brain does that. Tilt, it stops. We don't understand what he's talking about. And God gets frustrated. Because, you know, we take the Bible and we believe what the Bible says is all what God had to say and there is nothing to, to know more, even through the Bible, to understand more. And, you know, sometimes, I don't know if you ask yourself, why, why did God allow, does God allow to have different translations, different this and that? I think actually it was all part of the package. Because God said there was not supposed to be a perfect translation and then you don't need me. You don't need to ask anything else. You don't need the Holy Spirit. You just have the book. That's why God says, my ways are not your ways. He didn't say, my, my directions are not your directions. He said, my ways. You know, I did it my way. Do you know the song? I did it my way. And my ways have to do more with the way I am, which you get to know when you get to know me. And when you get to know me, you do the right things because you know my ways. You know, I, don't, I didn't tell you exactly what to do, but you did it right because you know my ways. That's what the words are. My ways are not your ways. You know, and to understand God's ways, we have to do this, 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 this download of an upgrade. Anthony was talking to us about the offering of Isaac. Abraham offering Isaac or wanted to offer Isaac. You know, God said to Abraham, offer me your son. Later on, there was an upgrade. Yeah. Thank God he downloaded the upgrade. Otherwise, Isaac would have been dead. Yeah. Many times in the Pharisees, when Jesus came, Jesus came was the new software, but they never do the upgrade. So they didn't never, never realized who this guy was. They crucified him because he can't be the person we're waiting for. You know, we can criticize the Pharisees, but actually we do that very often because we are so comfortable with the software we have and we don't want to be messed up. We think, what is going to do with me if I download this thing? What is going to happen with me? Yeah, oh, no, no, later, later. And you keep on saying later and later, but it, the time comes where actually then the upgrade that God kept on giving to the church to meet the needs of the people in the world, eventually this, this upgrade needs to happen so that we can actually be Christ to the people around us. And so I want to say to you as a church, be, uh, um, you know, understand that you also as a church, as a church, were saying to God, God, do it with us. We want to download as many upgrades as possible because we, would, we want to be nowadays the church that you need us to be in this world, you know? When Jesus came on earth, he left something and he became something else to reach us. And very often I ask myself, what am I leaving what are the things I got comfortable with that I'm not prepared to leave to be able to reach the people God wants to reach? And so, um, 20, I remember it was about 20 years ago, actually it was not less than 20 years ago, but 15 or 17 years ago, um, one day I was in the car, and in those days the name of our church was City Church. City Church. And Q um, Church is cool. It's a shame we only changed our name to Life Church. Otherwise, I would have thought, oh, Q Church is cool. <laughs> I'm very jealous, actually. Q Church is cool, it's cool. Uh, and, uh, and, um, uh, and so I was driving in the car, and, I, and we were called City Church. And, and I, I was praying, and I said to the Lord, Lord, how long will it take for the City Church to actually be the City Church? You know, the church of the city, the church the city knows about, the church every taxi driver knows about. You know, I think a church is known in the city when every taxi driver knows you, not when the Christians know you, when the taxi drivers know you, because they are, they are the people who know everything. And, and so, and when I was driving, I felt the Lord say to me, for this to happen, Johnny, you need to change. You know, straight away I was thinking about changing Changing the way we do things, changing, pray more, and be more holy or whatever. You know, I was thinking in this direction, you know. And, uh, and then, uh, and then I, I, I kept on thinking about this. And one day as I was driving, 
And I was talking to God because this thing you need to change, he bothered me. I thought, what? What do I need to change? We have to change the way we put the chairs in the meeting, maybe the way we do the meetings, you know, other, sing more songs, pray more. What? I thought, what do we change? And I kept on thinking of that. And one day I was thinking about when I was, when I came to England. As an Italian, I came to England. Yeah, I was 30, whatever, five, seven, whatever, years ago. It was a long time ago, anyhow. I came to England to study theology. And as I came, I was shocked. Really, I was shocked. You know, when I, I was warned that the Bible school I was going to go to was a Bible school that really kind of, you know, kind of, it was more of a boot camp, you know, more than a Bible school. I was warned already about it. But I wasn't really prepared for what, you know, happened, you know. Anyhow, there was many things that were happening in which that I started not to feel at home anymore. Uh, I, was crack, I was saying jokes and people got upset with me, you know. I was doing stuff, you know. I thought, you know, in, back home in Italy, we did that, you know. We did stuff with, with the youth of our church. So one day I thought, it's funny. Let's go to the dorm, to the dormitory of the girls and, and hang all the shoes from the window or, or put spaghetti in their pajamas, you know, stuff like that. I thought everybody would laugh and they would be fine with it, you know. Let's just, and they were not. They were all upset with me, you know. The director called me and said, if you carry on doing this, we will send you back to Italy. And, um, and then one day I remember they said to me, oh, you know, here we always, we eat toast all the time. I thought, toast, toast is good, toast is good. You know, in Italy, when I, when I grew up, toast was a toasted sandwich full of cheese and ham and good stuff. That was what I called toast. So when they told me, the, you know, when I, I saw porridge the first time, I almost died. You know, I thought, what is this? What is this? And then they said, oh, no, but we, we also eat toast, a lot of toast, toast every day. I thought, oh, thank God, toast every day, how cool is that? I used to live on toast when I lived home, back home in the south of Italy, you know. I loved it. When the toast came, <laughs> I, I thought, I was waiting for the toast. And the toast had come. And I said, when is the toast coming? He said, it has been. Wait, which one? This one. I said, that's not toast. He said, that's a toast. And then they realize in England, that's a toast. It's not a toast, a sandwich with cheese and ham inside it. I was so disappointed. Very sad. Very sad. Very sad. I was very disappointed. Especially when I went to the wedding there in Tunbridge Wells, and they all said, and they all said keep the, 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 the champagne for the toast. And, and so I was waiting until the toast comes, and the toast never came, you know. And I thought, oh. <laughs> it was very fun. Anyhow, one day I was, I was in the chapel, in the, in the Bible school, and, uh, and I was so frustrated, and I said to the Lord, I said, you know what, after people got upset with me, and I was having lunch, at lunchtime, well, I had a table assigned to me, and there was five different nationalities at this table, and it, I mean, at the beginning, when everybody is in love with each other, it's fine, but then, I mean, soon we lost it, you know, like, oh, the different cultures, you know, one, there was a guy after the food, he went, Ugh! I mean, my mom is French, and she, oh, I mean, the, eti the etiquette she, she raised me with, I went like, what? <laughs> the guy looks at me, this Nigerian looks at me like he's an older man, you know. And I said, what did you just do? And he said, what did I do? He said, you just did, whoa, like this, you don't do this, you do this in Africa, not here, you know, like. And I was waiting for him, and the Germans were there, the Italian, the African, the Thailand, the guy from Thailand. And he was, it was a big role, you know. And yeah, I was at the chapel, and I was so frustrated, and I said, God, I'm going to do this thing as fast as I can. With I, do, I, ju I, ju I just don't feel at home here. I'm going to do this two years so qu as quick as I can. I'm not going to say a word. I'm not going to do anything and just get, get on with it. Years back, I was in Vienna. When I asked God, uh, when I was asking, what does it mean for you to change? You know what he told me? He said, you know, Johnny, sometimes in your church, I feel exactly like that. Yeah. I thought, what? Yeah. yeah. He said, in your church, sometimes I feel exactly like that. You know, you have a nice Austrian culture there. Austrians maybe feel at home, but I don't feel at home. Yeah. I can't be God. I can do a few things, and I do as much as I can. But if you really want me to be God, so that the life of the city church becomes a city church, then you have to change. You have to create an atmosphere where not just Austrians feel at home, but where I feel at home. And then I thought, again, because you always think what God is, is trying to say. So I thought, we're all going to be holy. We're all going to be praying a lot. We're all going to be... And then God said to me, look at Jesus. And when I looked at Jesus, 
Oh my goodness. He was totally pleasing to the Father. And he was totally loved by the worst people around. Because I thought, actually, if you are a Christian that is pleasing to God, then the world will hate you. I used to think that. You know, the more the people in the world say, you're weird, you know, uh, the more you should be happy because, you know, they have hated Jesus, so they will hate you. All the all Bible verses you kind of gather around to confirm what you believe. But actually, I realized that God was saying, if you become more like me, you will see that the sinners, the, you know, what about the sinners, the, the tax collectors and prostitutes and stuff, all these people will come to you just as much as they came to Jesus. And actually, I realized I needed to be saved, not the people so-called out there needed to be saved. And this is why the journey was so important. I remember at that time, and I was going through a diff- and God showed to me that how important it was to have a culture in his house where he feels at home. I mean, that's normal, isn't it? If it's his house, he should feel at home, isn't it? And, and it was, I never thought about it before. Yeah, that's right, we're building God's house, and he should feel at home, you know, like... And, uh, and then I agree with the fact that if God feels at home, then people will feel at home, and even the worst kind of people will feel at home. Because that's how Jesus was. So we started talking about culture, the culture. And uh, so I took, uh, I took uh, a few people from our church away, three days, and I said to them, you know, guys, we need to now ask ourselves the question, what kind of culture is a culture in which God feels at home? So we kind of wrote a few things, you know, generational thinking, the glasses are full, hopeful, including all sorts of stuff. You know, we wrote about over 40 different cultural attributes uh, that in which we think God would, that God would feel at home there. And then I asked them, how many of these are typical Austrian? It was a bad question. <laughs> and we realized that maybe half of them was, tip- was also to be found in Austria. So I knew, I said to everybody, so we need to change. We need to say, God, we want you to change us. You know what is culture? Culture is what you do without thinking. You know, you know why I do, I do this? Because I'm Italian. <laughs> in the school, nobody taught me to do this. Nobody said when I was in school, you knew you're Italian, move your left hand to the right, and now to the left, and now up there, and you don't do that. My mom is French, moved to Italy because my my father, she was never taught how to be Italian. She became Italian. You know why? Because Italian culture influences her. You know? And so that we went through a period. And at that time, Anthony came to our church. And we had a teaching of the church, a whole, uh, I think, uh, a whole uh, Friday afternoon and Friday evening. So he said, I'm going to talk to you about culture. And I remember him teaching to us about culture. And he was at the right time moment. It was just so at the right, he didn't know about the journey I was going through, but it was so much at the right moment. And this thing has really influenced us. Now, I don't know, maybe you were in the, in, at this time, you know, so many years ago in the church here. And I hope it, it has influenced you, because I know he's been teaching it here, and not just in Austria, as much as it's influenced us. It's totally influenced us. There was a time, you know, before this time, we hardly ever seen anybody who was not a believer come to our church. And if he came, he stood, maybe he sat for half an hour and ran away. After that, I don't think there has been one meeting of our church meeting in which we didn't have visitors. And people have been touched by God, totally transformed by God. You know, when we're talking about the culture of being inclusive, for example, I'll tell you something. Just a few weeks ago, the Life Church has, in the meantime, the biggest exhibition stand in our New Age, National New Age exhibition. You know? We are right in the middle of it. It's the most beautiful stand. And pray for people, pray for healing. So many people were touched by God there. Now, 25 years ago, we wouldn't have done that. You know what we would have done? We would have cursed it. We would have commanded to close down. We would have, you know, whatever, and seen the devil everywhere. And now because our culture has changed, we don't pray against it anymore. You know, we go in it. We just go in it. We go in it. One year, we could not go to the New Age exhibition. The manager, the boss rang us. Where are you? We said, no, it's just too much money. This time we couldn't afford it. Oh, come on. He said, next year you must come back again. I mean, this guy, once he said, you, you are part of the New Age exhibition. You know, and it's true. The Bible says God is the father of all spirits. 
Some time ago, a lady came to me and said, oh, Johnny, my neighbor, she was almost coming to church. I said, really? Why she didn't come? She said, oh, just the day before I, she was going to come, I discovered she's a medium. I said, okay, she's a medium? Yeah. So why she didn't come? She said, yeah, because she said, I thought, you're not going to take a medium to church. You know, she, she's demonic. No, I said, you go back to her and said, come to our church. We are all medium. Yay. We are all medium. What does a medium do? It's just connected with the spirit and does whatever. We do all, all of us are like that. She said, really? Yeah. But years before, I would have said, yeah, don't bring it because it might influence our church meeting. You know what? We, I don't stop and think now. What is our culture? What should we do? Okay, in this, in this situation we do point number three, verse two. We don't do that. You just do it because you have become something. And this is part of the change that the church needs to go. Years after, Anthony came back again. I mean, he comes more often than that, but this one time he came and he had some time with our leaders, a whole day with the leaders, and he spoke about the new covenant. And for us, it was the first one, an upgrade. When he came and spoke about the new covenant, it was an upgrade for us. You know? Hello. I'm talking about upgrades. We in Austria need the upgrades also that God sends to us. And this teaching has transformed us so immensely. Really, it has entered the fabric of what, you know, when you understand actually what God has done and what God's attitude towards, towards you is, it transforms. I remember after, after he had a whole day with us, one of our, my pastors came to me and said, Johnny, I don't know if I can preach on Saturday. I said, why not? Well, after what Anthony said, I'm, I don't know if I can prepare a sermon. I have to think about it. You know, I can't, can't have, you know, he wasn't negative. He was being positive. He was just so impacted that he said, I, I don't know. I, I, I want to be careful what I'm saying now. I don't, want to, I don't want to bring law to people. I want to bring freedom, and I want to bring what, what God has done for us. And he's, he's, he's permeated everything. Now, when, God, when people come to me and say, Johnny, what is the difference between Life Church? Why is Life Church planting churches in Austria? Why is Life Church entering in all sorts of areas of society? What is the difference between you and the, when, what other people did? And it's not because we are better. We don't have, you know, we, we preach also, we do meetings. But, you know, sometimes you can be in a church, sing the right songs, have a message, have everything, all the components that the church has to have. But if the message that is flowing through what we are singing and what we are saying is not presenting God's heart, yeah. is you can do have the best music, you can have the best everything and still have a very old, old software that God says, come on, guys, I sent a few upgrades already. You can put old software in new songs, but I won't cut it. You have to just have my word. And, and so we are so thankful for the ministry of this church. And I know as you go through a change as a Q church, you know, it's going to be even more than that. And I want you to know that what God does in you and through you is also influencing other people especially in Austria. He's always transformed us. He's always influenced us. And you know what? And the reason, the difference, that there is a difference and there is a church and people that are so inclusive is not just because we have new techniques. You can have a new technique and not including other people. People feel that. People feel that. And for me, when I, when I see Austrians, men and women come to Christ and some of them say, okay, I'm courageous enough to become a leader, to become a pastor, to become a woman pastor, a man pastor, you know? Uh, this, this is so powerful. And in the last, in the, in the, this time, in his visit to us, also, Anthony, has been bringing things about God and about his love for us and inclusion of the world and stuff. He's making us thinking, think some more. But I want to encourage you, I want to encourage you as a church to keep on embracing what God has for you. Because it's not just what God does here in the church, but it's also what God does through you. What God does through you. I was saying, I was saying to Christine and Anthony today, I remember years ago, I was standing on this platform and I was talking about, um, about the fact that God is going to give you a megaphone. He's going to put a megaphone in your mouth. You know, and what you say just for you is going to become a voice that is going to go beyond. And it is already happening. But it's going to be a voice that goes beyond beyond what, um, what is for the house here. 
Amen. There is, there, is a, there is a person here that I, I don't know who this person here is. And God wants to tell you this word. I don't have any plan B. I don't have any plan C. According to your failures, according to your mistakes. Because I never planned that you never made a mistake. My plan included your mistakes. I don't know who it is, but this person, as I was preparing, God said, whatever you say, don't forget to say this. There is a person here that needs to hear this. God does not have any plan B for you. He only has plan A, one plan that includes everything that is happening in your life. And he wants you to realize this. He wants you to start dreaming as if you have no hindrances. Start dreaming as if you have no hindrances. Because God does not have something planned for you uh, that is actually God is saying to me that this is your dreams and God's plans for you is that your dreams come true. It's not some strange plan. It's not something that has nothing to do with what you feel. God is saying to this person, what my plan is for you is what you have been feeling for a long time in your heart. And my, my desire is that this comes to fulfillment. But I want you to lay down this, oh, I must do with plan B. I must keep my head down, not expect too much. Just stay, do, stay low, just a little bit is enough. God said, I want you to stand up and I want you to expect a lot. I want you to recognize that whatever is ahead of you, the reason why you were born, the reason why you have all the potential in you that you have, is because of what is ahead of you. So don't hold, don't, do not hold back. Discover what I have hidden in you. All the potential I've hidden in you, discover it. Because I want it not to be uh, uh, hidden anymore in your life. I want it to come forth to the light. In the name of Jesus. Hey, can we all stand up, please? Yeah. Amen. I just want to pray for you. It's, it's very exciting. When I heard from Anthony what you as a church are going to do, the change and the Q church and all this stuff, I thought, wow, that's great. That's great. You know what? Um, there, there was, um, I actually, I've written this word because actually I, I, I meant to tell you that. Listen, I have written this Bible verse. Am I, no, what is it? You can keep, you can start playing something jazzy or something like that. <laughs> Um, what is it? Listen, in, in, in 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 6, there is a situation here where Israel is in real trouble. And uh, the son of the boss, of, of Saul, the king, he was somewhere else with his armor bearer, right? And there, it was a desperate situation, you know, and the Philistines were so many and so big and so, you know, you countless that it was just a dilemma for Israel. And, and Jonathan, this, the, young, the son of the king, says to his armor bearer these words. Jonathan said to his young armor bearer, come, let us go over to the outpost of this uncircumcised man. And then he says this, perhaps the Lord will act on our behalf. Perhaps. You know, I was raised this way. If you're full of faith, you don't say perhaps. You say, God will act on our behalf. I mean, what, 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 what do you mean perhaps? What's wrong with you? I'll tell you what, it was good enough for God. They said, perhaps God will do something for us. And I feel that God you, wants you as a church to have this spirit of, hey, let's make a change. Perhaps this time will be something that is going to affect the city more than ever before. And never think that this perhaps, let's try out, is something that doesn't move God. Because when Jonathan said to his, his armor bearer, let's do something, perhaps God help me, helps us. God said, perhaps I will, because this is very courageous what you're doing. And I want to encourage you as a church to be a church of perhaps God will do something for us. Never only do things when you are absolutely certain. I would have done half the things I've done in my life if I needed to be certain. But the perhaps with courage draws God working in you. Amen? Don't forget this. The perhaps faith. Perhaps God will help us. Amen? Put, put both hands up in the air like this. 
If you, if you want to, you don't have to, but if you, please, please do that. Father, I ask you, uh, I know I thank you for your presence in this church. I thank you, Lord, that your presence is especially here because we see that people are encouraged to go ways they've never been before. This is a sign of you being in the house. It's a sign of us coming to the next level. It's a sign that we are ready to just go beyond our own shadow and get into something new. It's a sign that you are here in the house. Father, I want to speak a blessing and I want to speak the spirit of courage. I want to speak out the spirit of creativity, a spirit of fearlessness that you are not afraid as you step ahead in everything that you have planned to do that you have planned to do. Father, I ask you that you take every uncertainty away in a supernatural way. The people in the church will be just like Jonathan and his armor bearer. One says, perhaps, and the other guy says, sounds good for me, I'm gonna go with you. And Father, I ask you that the same spirit of these two guys uh, is gonna be on, on, the, on the church, on the rock church, as they become the Q church. And Father, I ask you that what you are doing in them is going to bear fruit, not just in the church here, among the people who are followers of Christ. But Father, I ask you that the people in the city are going to be hearing a sound that is also new to them, and they're going to come and they're going to start to ask the questions. They're going to join the quest of what you want to do through this church. Father, I ask you also for courage for everyone here for courage. I ask you, Lord, that many in, much encouragement is going to come to this church. Because if I was the devil, I would want to make sure that they are not encouraged. And so I ask you, Lord, for encouragers. I ask you, Lord, for this ministry of encouragement to increase and increase and increase and increase in the Rock Church. And then to develop in the Q Church. That people are going to receive courage. I ask, Lord, that people who are discouraged because of life circumstances, they're going to receive courage in a supernatural way that does not come from circumstances but comes from you Lord that comes from you Lord in the name of Jesus and Father I applaud everything you've done in this church and everything you're going to do hey let's give Jesus an applause for what he's doing come on come on Woo! Amen. Amen. all right thank you Jenny please be seated for a minute we love Jenny don't we and Angela and Angela as well. It's awesome. Uh, we're going to do our regular giving. Um, I've never been in the city or met a person who had a building or an opportunity who said, you don't have to pay anything. Or where you need help or sound equipment or transport or vehicles that somebody said, well, you don't need to buy it. Just take it off the parking lot. It's you know, it, it all is paid for, and it's paid for by people, but it's paid for by people who have a passion. And when you have a passion, you invest. And so I want to first of all thank you, those of you who've been part of this house, for your investment that's enabled us to be who we are and also to bless people like Janny and, and, uh, and help them. So it's not magic, but there is a blessing involved. I, I believe what the Bible says, that with the measure you give is the measure you receive. And sometimes if you have a problem with the measure that you receive, it's not about getting more, it's about giving more. Because with the measure you give is how you receive, give it a try. It's a real blessing. So in just one minute, we're going to, we call it pay it forward here. Um, if you've not come prepared or if you have, there's envelopes in the back or you can pay online, just go on our site, go to My Donate and uh, you can do it all on there. So I've asked the guys, Chris was saying, what shall we sing? I said, well, we, we ought to go back to the beginning and sing Made New, because if there's one thing that's to do with reformation and change, it's about being made new. And one of the wonderful things about, uh, about reformation is I heard one guy describe it like this. He said, about every 500 years uh, in modern history, um, the church has had to have, in American terms, a yard sale, in British terms, a car boot sale. Now, here's the, here's the principle. I cannot put a car in my garage. But the garage is supposed to be able to take a car, but I can't get a car in there because of the accumulated junk. Since, 90, since 1999, and uh, also, if you go into our eaves under the thing, you can't get any more stuff in there. And uh, you all don't look so innocent. You know what this is all about. 
you know, the top shelf of the wardrobe, that cupboard that if you open it now, it all falls on you, so you just open it a bit and stuff stuff in. My point is this, all of us in here accumulate stuff and most of it is junk that we no longer need and it's taking up space in our attic, in our garage, in our cupboard and it should be gone because there's no room for something new to come in. One of the wonderful aspects that I love about the gospel is it's a gospel that says we can get rid of the junk we can get rid of, so I have programs now that I go on and it says clean up your files and I start it and it searches through my files for all the stuff on there that I no longer need and then it says press this little green button it says clean and you now have 4.3 gigabytes more room because it just cleaned it up listen here's what here's what the Holy Spirit does in our life he comes and does that clean thing and says you can have 4.6 more gigabytes of life but you've got to press this button of acceptance and when you press that button of acceptance it will clean the files and you'll be made new again i want you to be made new it's a gospel of being made new there's no condemnation it's all about the offer of life and so i want you to have your reformation tonight okay as the song says it's for you you're calling me over you're pulling me close so receive it tonight, let it be a blessing to you. If we don't have your details and you want to stay in touch, fill in one of the little cards there that's, and, uh, and give it. So we're going to sing this song, pay it forward, and then we're done. All right, let's do it. Thanks for watching. You can find out more about all the Rock is doing locally and internationally at www.rockofyork.co.uk. And why not support The Rock from wherever you are? Just hit the donate button now to help us help others.